Right, good afternoon everyone. Um, it's two o'clock, so we'll get started. Um, this is David Jewell and Darren Walters, um, CAE specialists working with Magenta. Um, we're here to show you um, how to do some integrated design analysis using Solid Edge Simulation. <clears throat> so what is design analysis? Um, well, an analysis or sim simulation that's embedded in a CAD system um, could, be, could be described as such. Um, and FEA, uh, for those who don't know, is the process of breaking down uh, complex structures that can't be um, solved explicitly into simple structures or finite elements. And then using uh, numerical techniques, um, a solution can be derived to the performance of the entire structure from looking at the inter interconnected behavior of the elements. So um, the topics we're going to cover this afternoon are um, why to do analysis, um, when's the best time in the design cycle, um, who in the organization can carry out FEA. Um, we're going to look at the scalable solution of analysis products from Siemens. Um, we're going to have a demonstration of solid edge simulation. And um, we're then going to move on just to show you very briefly, uh, or talk very briefly about uh, FEMAP, which is an, another family product. And then there'll be some opportunity for questions at the end. So um, why do simulation? Well, there's lots of things that simulation can help us with. Um, in enabling enabling us to understand the performance of our structures. We can uh, reduce the risk of, of failures occurring. Um, we can reduce the cost of testing by carrying out effectually vir virtual prototyping, virtual testing. We can minimize material usage by understanding what parts of the structure are carrying the loads and, and removing um, material that's not uh, pulling its weight, so to speak. Um, we can improve product quality and reduce time to market. Um, and when you start using this software, you find it's really the value in doing running trial and error scenarios really enables you to innovate by, by being able to try things that you wouldn't be able to, to try otherwise. It wouldn't be cost effective to try physically. Um, and as part of your running within your CAD system, it, it just it gets you more in, uh, investment, more value from your CAD investment. So uh, when would be the best time to um, carry out analysis? Um, well, if, if one of the roles of analysis is to uh, identify errors um, then and, and help you to, to fix them, then the time at which, or the position within the life cycle of a product at which an error occurs has a massive influence on the cost of putting it right. Uh, at very early design stages, concept and prototype, then um, errors would actually be expected and the cost of uh, putting them right is small. As you move into production, the costs escalate and uh, if you end up with a design that fails and uh, causing some damage and liability, then uh, the costs really uh, ex exponential. So, so this uh, is, really uh, illustrates the value of carrying out analysis early on in the design cycle by you designers with uh, solid edge simulation. So um, who in an organization um, can undertake simulation? Uh, well, for the CAD engineer um, using an embedded tool, analysis it would not be expected to be their primary function. Um, so there's a requirement for the software to be uh, very simple and easy to use. The, uh, the dedicated analyst um, would be expected to have much greater knowledge of um, advanced systems. And then the, there's the consultant who works out typically outside of the organization um, for when the requirement is only occasional. If the problem uh, that needs to be solved is outside the, the scope, of the organization, um, if there happens to be too much work on and there's not enough resource to within the organization to handle it, or um, near the end of the, 
design circle if, if there's a if there's a a problem in the field and uh, analysis can be used forensically to understand what's gone wrong. So the solutions that are available from Siemens um, to solid edge users are Simulation Express, which comes um, with with the uh, with the installation, which has quite limited functionality, um, but is okay for some simple single part analysis, such as basic sizing. Um, to actually get get more much more value from the product or from the technology, um, the the simulation add-in um, really give, gives a, a lot of um, functionality um, within a package that's very easy to to pick up and, and learn. So the environment is familiar, obviously, to the to the CAD operators. Um, beyond single part analysis that, that you can do with Simulation Express, you can do uh, assembly analysis where you can understand the interaction between components within the assembly by prescribing glued or linear contact. There's much better control over the, the meshing, which is important um, both for accuracy and, and simply being able to represent uh, the structures involved, which may be quite complex. Um, and if you're dealing in uh, thin walled structures, such as sheet metal constructions, then uh, the ability to do uh, shell meshing is, uh, is essential. And, and that's uh, capable within solid edge simulation. Um, additionally, um, it supplies or is able to solve lots of the, or the, the most commonly used analysis types with, with the, the most commonly used uh, loading scenarios. Um, within the family, um, really, as, as a sort of upward migration path, is full FEMAP with an Exnestrone, which we'll, we'll touch very briefly on later. Uh, this is a, a standalone full capability FEA system. Um, and then perhaps in parallel to, to, to this um, chain is, is the, the, uh, the NX product suite, which has um, mechanical simulation um, as part, uh, available as part of the tool set. Um, in common throughout the range, uh, these uh, systems use the NX Nastran solvers, which are, are powerful um, and uh, well supported and developed uh, within Siemens. And they've got a, a very well respected name across a broad range of industries. So um, I'll flip back control to Darren now, who will um, run through us a quick demonstration. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is so I'm going to run through a linear static analysis of this assembly that you can see on screen at the moment, hopefully. So what we have there is a, a front upright assembly from, from some kind of vehicle. And I want to just apply some, some typical loads that it may see in operation. So in this case, it's going to be a combined braking and bump situation that, that we're actually going to, uh, that we're going to run on this model. So first thing I'm going to do is I don't actually want to run the analysis on all the components here. Uh, there's a few extra bits that I'm not really that interested in. So I'm just going to hide a, a couple of them. So um, in this one, I, I don't need the front disk. I don't want to run the uh, the hub. Within the, the, the caliper itself, we have uh, the brake pads and, and a clip on the outside. So actually, all I want to do is run the analysis on these three parts. So simulation sits within the solid edge interface and we have along the top of the screen uh, a simulation uh, series of uh, a simulation menu bar which we which we'll dive into later on and we also have a simulation geometry which I'm not going to use in this particular demonstration. Simulation geometry is there for building idealized models so and what we mean by that is if we have a very thin sheet metal structure for us for an example as an example we often use a mid-plane representation in that where we and we model and mesh it with uh, shell elements so we've got a series of tools here for doing mid-plane extraction and then for tidying the geometry up afterwards the final thing that i'll mention within this new 
this stage is we have a direct port to FEMAP and we will talk a little bit about FEMAP later on but if I hit that it will fire up FEMAP, it will load the model in and, and it will maintain a link within Solid Edge. Most of what I'm going to do today is actually use the, 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 the kind of feature tree down the left hand side and to, to, to build up my, my simulation study. So what I'm going to start by doing is right clicking and say a new study. And at this stage, we have to tell it a bit about what we're going to do within the analysis. So firstly, what type of analysis is it? So we can do linear static stress analysis, modal analysis, buckling, and then we can do some coupled analyses as well. So um, uh, we can do a coupled heat transfer and static heat transfer and buckling. And I was forgetting the steady state heat transfer by itself as well, of course, there. Um, also the mesh type so in this particular example we've got a, a solid model and we're going to mesh it with solid tetrahedral elements but if we had a sheet metal shell analysis we'd use surfaces if we had a combination of two of them we would have a mixed mixed uh, uh, analysis of, of solids and shells so all I'm going to do is just use a linear static analysis like so and then it asks me which parts we want in the analysis that's all I do simply draw a window around it and that's one advantage for hiding the components earlier it just makes the, the process of selecting what I want in the analysis easier okay so down the left now it's created our study and we, we will basically just work down this or alternatively work along the menu along, and, and build our analysis study so the first thing to note then if I expand the geometry tab out you can see materials are assigned. These are assigned to the individual parts, and as part of a design process, you would typically assign the material at that stage. So it picks up those those materials at that at this stage now. And so we're just going to apply some loads, some constraints. We're going to create our finite element mesh, and we're going to create connectors to determine uh, how the parts interact with one another, one another. Okay, so let's go to loads first. Then, so we got about five different types of linear static loads we can apply. So we can apply forces to faces, edges, points, pressures to faces. We can apply torques, uh, dis force displacement. So if we know how far something actually moves, then we can apply that displacement. Or we can apply a bearing load. And a bearing load basically simulates a pin in a hole where you get a non-uniform distribution of the force uh, from the contact. Uh, in addition to that, we can apply body loads. So things like centrifugal loads, accelerations or gravity, and we generate in a model because it all raises a, 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 an amount of, uh, the temperature increases by a certain amount, we can just apply that uh, and, and see the thermal expansion. So to start, I'm just gonna apply a force. And all I'm going to do is apply a force to that face there. And we're going to do a force of 5 kilonewtons. So I could type in 5,000. If I want to do, I just put 5k in, and that'll put the, the, the force like that. Now, I need to orientate this. By default, it'll be normal to that face. But if I just drag this arrow, uh, the, 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 the steering wheel, off to a face that's in the direction that I want. You see that it orientates that force to be normal to the face that I've just picked. Okay, so the first force I'm going to apply, I'm just going to apply another force as well. So that's our kind of bump load, if you like. And we also want to apply braking force as well. So again, just force that face there, and then minus 10 kilonewtons in this case. Okay, so it's building up our, our features in the tree. At any stage, I could go in and I could edit that and change the value, change the direction, even the color of the arrow if we want to do that. Okay, so I just selected just to turn it off, just to unclutter the screen, and then I'll go in and apply some constraints to this model. So we've got up here. Um, half a dozen different types of constraints. So we can fully fix, we can create a, a pinned constraint, we can add symmetry, 
uh, a user defined constraint, uh, a specific constraint if we've got a cylindrical surface, and the one that's greyed out is uh, for no rotations, which only applies to shell, shell elements. Uh, I could also access uh, this at on the left hand side here. Um, if I just um, Sorry about that. Okay, if I just right click on the constraints here, uh, I can apply them this way as well. So, what I'm going to do is just uh, select a fixed constraint. I'm just going to apply it to that face in there. I'm then going to apply a, I'll do it in the same, same method on the left here, um, I'll apply a user defined constraint on these, this surface here. And if I just deselect certain directions, it will only, it, it, in that way, I can just apply the constraint in the global Z direction, like so. And in a similar way, again, with the user defined constraint on the top of the upright, I'll just deselect the one direction that I, that I don't want. We can also specify coordinate systems. If we define a coordinate system because we want to uh, restrain the model in, in a specific direction, we can do it that way. Okay. So I'm going to jump to connectors yet and come back, come back to meshing in a moment. Um, and we just need to now say something about how this model, how the parts in this model interact with one another. And we do that with the connectors menu here. So we can, so for, for a starting point, we have a bolted joint here. So we're going to use a bolted connection in, in those regions. So if we just go to bolt, and I can pick these individually, like so, or I can say all on a plane. If I just pick uh, that hole there, because these two holes all lie on the same plane, it will, it will, it will see them both and, and select them both. And so what it will do is it knows it's, it knows the size of the hole. It's a 10 mil. It knows the, or it estimates the, the bolt diameter based on the database it contains. And all we need to do is, is put in, if we want, a, a pre-stress force which I can work out quite easily or estimate quite easily just by a simple equation. Uh, and, and typically for an, for an M10, it's somewhere around 25 kilonewtons is the kind of preload we'd expect to see in that. So I can apply the bolt preload to those locations quite easily. So the final thing I need to do for the connections is just set up how the, how the three components interact. So I'm just going to use an automatic connection for that pick those two components and I have the choice of either saying they're glued together or then or it's a no penetration contact which is what I have in this case so in other words the components can slide against each other they can lift away if the forces dictate that but they can't penetrate so I hit the tick and what it will do is it will find and highlight on the screen where the 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 uh, common faces within that tolerance that it finds so we just hit create connector and that will create the connection between those ones those components. Automatic again, so let's just do these two components as well. And this time I just want to glue them together. This is a press fit. I'm not that interested in that area, so I'm just going to simply glue them together. Okay. So we've now set up our loads, our constraints, our connections, and we need to obviously now subdivide the model into small elements, which is what we call meshing. If I just hit the mesh button, it'll come up with a little dialog box where I can adjust the slider uh, to a, a, an appropriate size. I've also got lots of options. I want to delve deeper into the, the meshing parameters. For example, if I want more detail around or a smaller angle around a hole, I can juggle that value there. But there's lots of things I can tweak with the meshing as on a global level. The other thing I can do is I can apply mesh controls to certain areas. So, for example, if after I run the analysis, I see there's some high stress around here, what I might want to do is just go in and apply a finer mesh to this to this region here, as an example. Okay, so we can do that. We can apply local mesh con controls on certain features, so we can um, obtain more detailed stresses in, in particular areas. The other thing I can do. 
is uh, I can just apply body element sizes, which is quite a useful way of working, I find. So in this particular example, I don't actually care what the caliper does, particularly it's a boarding component. I know it's up to the job. So I can just specify quite a large element size for that. And it'll give you a preview on the screen of the, of the mesh size. And then I can apply a finer mesh for these two components, which are the ones I'm actually interested in. So five millimeters or three millimeters or, or whatever, we, whatever we decide. Okay, so the next stage in this would be hit the mesh button, mesh or mesh and solve, and we and that would uh, go that the computer would then sit there for at about two or three minutes. It'd mesh it and then it would run the analysis and, and, and solve it. So rather than sitting here waiting for it, I have one this exactly the same component or assembly that I've run through now. <laughs> so the analysis itself is quite complicated because. The no penetration contact we specify between these two components, it has to solve an iterative process. So that's, that's quite complicated. And also the bolt load, it has to run that several times to ensure that the bolt preload comes through correctly. But either way, after we run the analysis, it fires us into the results section where we can the results from, from our study. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm not that concerned by what's happening in the caliper or to a less extent what's happening in, in this shaft here. So I can just go in and I'll just hide those. And you can see the representation it makes of a bolt here. This is a very standard way to represent a bolt, which is with rigid beams and a, and a, and a beam with a correct cross section there. But I can also hide that as well. So I can now go in and actually start to look at, look at the results that it's presented to us. So you can see, high stress locations it's found. One of the most useful things to do with any analysis, first of all, is to hit the button. It's not it look, look pretty and, and, and impress your boss. It's actually turning direction and we're vectored to. So knowing what the loads are unreasonable to me. And we can save that animation out uh, some kind of uh, movie file if, if we want to. Another to identify where the peak stress is. In this particular case, it's very obvious where it is. We can see it very easily. But sometimes it might be hidden in a small feature somewhere, and this is just a very nice way of, of going in and, and seeing where that high stress is. If there's a particular region that we want to find a or look at what the stress is, we can probe the value out of that. So if we just click on location or location we can very easily determine what the stresses are in those locations okay so let's just look at a few more post-processing options we have uh, often it's quite useful to view a, a fewer colors here so more of a kind of engineer's plot as opposed to a nice marketing plot if you like um, and it's also generally a good idea to hide the mesh, just just helps you see that, that the model is a much more, uh, much, much easier. And we've got a few other options here, which we'll, we'll go through these a bit later in a different demo, which they're more appropriate to thermal analysis, which we'll, which we'll show time. Okay. So there's other um, things we can do with the, with the legend here. Actually, one thing that I didn't show, of course, is that we were looking at von Mises stress, which is a, a very um, useful stress to look at as, as a result plot. But of course, we can look at things like displacement, for example. Um, so at the moment, we're looking at total translation. So we're moving five, just under six millimeters. We'll look at translation in a certain direction. Uh, we can look at the applied force, the constraint force. When we look at stress, I mean, as I said, we're looking at von Mises stress. It's very common to look at things like principal stresses where you're looking at peak tensile stress, for example. Okay, so one of the final things that we'll um, do, do with this is we'll just create a, a quick report. Um, actually, one thing that I will just mention before we do that is we can also access all these plots down the left-hand side in, in, the, in the feature uh, tree there, which one of the new things they added this release okay then so simulation report so we can fill this in with our name company introduction our company logo all that kind of thing and then we can publish it um, 
as a web page, as a Word document. Um, but I'll just go for the uh, web page and it'll create a few standard plots to start off with. And then it will give us a nice uh, summary of our of our results within uh, th th this HTML file. Very useful for, for uh, studying things like design changes, where you want to document design changes. So it's a very useful little tool just to quickly save a report out so you've got it there documented. And then if we click on any of these, we can see them in, in more detail like so. OK, so let's just close the simulation results. Go back to the the, the main um, the main part of uh, Solid Edge. One of the most useful things, of course, with it being an integrated package within Solid Edge, is if I now go in and I, from from just from the analysis results, we have um, some high stress in this region. So what would probably be a good idea is just to thicken these sections up a bit. So I just drag drag those down using the synchronous uh, method. Uh, maybe we we'd want to put a, a a larger radius in that area as well, perhaps. Okay. jump back to simulation tab and what you'll see is that two things have happened um, firstly is it knows the models changed because the mesh is now out of date so it knows that because we've made a model change we have to remesh it but the nice thing is our forces and our constraints because we haven't altered the faces they're applied to they're absolutely fine so all we need to do is basically mesh and then hit the mesh and solve button and then it'll run through it'll create a new set of results and we can see what that design change does. Okay, so that's all I'm going to show at this stage for the analysis. And I'll hand back to Dave now, and he can uh, uh, talk through what basically a summary of what we've just seen. Thank you, Darren. Very good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just to recap then on on um, some of the key points of solid edge simulation. Um, you've got nice, convenient geometry-based boundary conditions. Um, by boundary conditions, that's uh, analysis speak for loads and restraints. So uh, where we're actually um, attaching our loads, pressures, forces, whatever, um, and restraints are, are to geometric features within the CAD model, such as surfaces, edges, or vertices. Uh, you're not dealing with uh, elements and nodes like you perhaps would be in, in, a, in a more traditional system. Um, you see, you'll have seen we, we've got a very uh, robust automatic measure that um, really takes the, the a lot of the hard graft out of constructing a, a good quality mesh. Um, the, the, all of the uh, Siemens um, FEA products actually are, are, are very strict about their meshing rules, and, and the solvers are quite strict about uh, how they will um, work with poor quality elements. So. Um, this will produce, uh, in a fully automatic way, a good quality mesh. Uh, other systems might be capable of producing rapid meshes on awkward geometry, but they're not necessarily uh, of such good quality. Um, the, similarly, when you make changes to the CAD model, uh, the uh, FEA model is automatically updated. Uh, you'll see the word automatic appears quite uh, a lot in this summary page. Um, really, that's the name of the game: is to uh, to, to make the whole process uh, as streamlined and uh, as straightforward as possible for um, uh, CAD operators and designers. So, uh, the when dealing with with assemblies, actually uh, setting up the contact behaviour uh, can be uh, quite laborious. But uh, in solid edge simulation. The, the recognition of contacting surfaces automatically and the ability to define what kind of contact behavior you want between those components is, uh, is, is uh, highly simplified and, and easy to use. And, um, and then just uh, finally, um, when looking at the results, um, there's a, a wide range of post-processing tools to enable you to visualize what's going on with the models. 
So uh, back to Darren for, for a couple more very brief uh, demonstrations uh, showing some other, other analysis types. Okay, thanks Dave. Um, yeah, so we're just going to run um, another analysis now um, just to show you one of the one of the new features that was added in ST5, which is the ability to do uh, heat transfer, steady state heat transfer analysis. So I'm just going to set up a couple of things on this model and then run it quickly and we can just have a look at the results from this one. So what we have here then is a fairly simple um, expansion card that you, you may have found in, you might find in a, in a typical PC, something like that. Okay, so all we've done with this one is we've already set up a study and the difference is this time it's a steady state heat transfer. But apart from that, same as I showed before. We've set up a couple of loads already. So these are basically thermal loads and heat generation loads. These, these particular loads are within these, um, with these high seas here. So with the thermal loads, we have a new set of um, different loading scenarios compared to the structural load. So we can apply fixed temperatures, we can apply heat flux, so by heat flux we, we mean a uh, power per unit area. We can apply heat generation, so typically applied to a, a solid object that's developing a certain power. Convection, which we'll apply to this model in a moment, and we can also apply radiation. So typically when uh, heat transfer from, from hot bodies. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to apply power to this particular unit here. And the best thing to do with this one is just to hide the outside package and just apply it directly to this component which I've got set up in here. So we're just going to create a heat generation source there and we're going to have four watts on that one. Okay, switch the back on the, uh, the, the package. And we, we've got all these heat loads in this model. We need a, a, a method for removing the heat from the system. And in this case, and a lot of cases, in fact, of course, that's via convection. So we're not going to model the actual airflow over it. We're going to simulate it with a convection coefficient. Uh, within the Siemens family, there are uh, CFD fluid flow packages, which we can um, simulate the, the, the airflow or the, the fluid flow over, over objects and look at heat transfer in that way. That's not something we do in Solid Edge. We, we look at that in FEMAP or, or the NX suite. So all I'm doing is picking the major convecting faces in this model and then I'm going to type in a film coefficient which you can estimate um, by a number of methods or, or by publications where, where you, you can find them listed, but typically a value of 10 watts per meter squared K is, is a often, often a number that's, that's used for, for this kind of application. Okay, so we've set up our loads and our convection. So now we're just gonna set up our connectors. So again, just like I did before, this time we're just gonna do an automatic connect, connector on all the components glue them all together and create them. So it's gone through and it's found, um, I think it's 20 something connectors in there, if I remember rightly, yeah, 24 connectors it's found. So basically these are, these are faces between the components that, that typically touch all within a small tolerance. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll just mesh and solve it. Okay, so it's now subdividing the, the assembly into um, lots and lots of finite elements, which is now completed within 10 seconds. It's now running the heat transfer analysis. So it's calculating the temperatures at every single node in the model. And then once it's done that, it will basically start to write the results file out of, out of, the, out of the solver. So this just takes a few more seconds. So the solution is done and now it's just writing the results file. Okay, there we go. So it fires us to the simulation results. Um, by default, it actually uses a different color palette for the for the thermal analysis work, which is quite nice. And it's showing a peak temperature of about 104, 104 degrees Celsius in this one. So a couple of other nice things you can do. These are much more applicable, with, I find, with thermal analysis than stress analysis. Is we can do a uh, a contour plot like so, which is quite nice to actually see where the, the kind of a, 
uh, the, the gradient of heat transfer, the, the gradient of temperature, if you like, is very, very good at showing that. Other thing we can do is dynamic ISO contours. So we can basically um, look in the look in the model now and drag the slider, and we can look at um, areas that has a te have a temperature above a certain value that, that I either type in there or as I drag the slider, you can see that changes. Okay, so apart from that, everything is very similar um, to. Uh, to, to a stress analysis, we're just looking at temperature in this situation. When I set the analysis study up, I could have looked at heat flux as well. One of the options that you can tick in the, in the analysis options is, is, is if you want more data than just temperature. Okay, so we'll just close that and go back to the main model. And what I'm going to do next is create another study. So I've, everything I've done so far has just been on one study here. So let's create a new study. This time, let's do a steady state heat transfer and a stress analysis. Just press OK. Just window everything we want. Uh, let's grab that one as well. And we have a second study here. And what we can do very easily is we can just copy and paste the loads, the constraints, the connectors between our, our studies now. So I can very simply set up a second study here, which has got exactly the same thermal loads as the first study, and then run it to actually generate some stresses. And what I've, do, what I've done, I've just gone through the process of doing that in a model that's already been solved, and we can therefore look at basically what, what stresses we generate from the thermal expansion of the components. So you can see, actually, this is one of the situations that I've mentioned before where we have quite a complicated model and I can't actually see where the high stress is in it because it's hidden somewhere. So this might be where we use the max marker. The other thing that we can do, which is a very normal thing to do with analysis results, is if we change the, the legend on the right hand side to maybe a more uh, more useful scale, and we can start to go in and look at um, the results that we care about. Because chances are on a, on, a, on a design like this, we probably don't really care about stresses in this these locations we probably just care about the stresses in the board and in the in the clip at the end in the plate at the end. okay so that's a combined heat transfer and uh, linear static stress analysis that we've just solved there or just looked at the results anyway so the final thing that I'm going to show very briefly is just one of the kind of analysis that we can set up and run within Solid Edge Simulator. So this has already been set up and, and run. So if I just go to modify study, I, we can see there's a normal modes analysis, solid mesh again. So what we mean by this is we're looking at what natural frequencies this component has. So in other words, if we excite this component at, let's look at the first mode, if we excite this component at 2600 hertz, something around there, we'd expect to see this kind of uh, motion of, of this component. So one of the nice things, I, one of the very useful things we can do with, with this is just to uh, animate these. So if we just say animate, and it will animate through the, through the various modes. I've asked for only four modes. That was the first mode. This is the second mode. At, this is the third mode at three and a half thousand hertz. So the point in doing this is that if if this is on a piece of machinery which happens to vibrate somewhere close to these these uh, uh, frequencies, it's conceivable that we could uh, induce this kind of vibration. And what you don't want is to be exciting modes in a, in a structure generally can lead to failure, can lead to high stresses, can lead to noise. Now, if we wanted to take this a step further, we could put it into theme map and we could actually drive this with a, an advanced, uh, with the advanced vibration solver. We could actually put an input in, see what stresses and displacements we get. But as a very good first check, this can tell you an awful lot and can help you to, to design the structure so that it stays away from frequencies that you, that, uh, 
your machinery might be running at. Okay, so I'm just going to hand back to Dave now, and uh, he can uh, um, talk a bit about a uh, summary of what we've seen. Brilliant, thanks, Darren. That's great. So, um, just to summarise, then recap on um, solid simulation, the um, analysis types that are now available in SD5, which has kind of grown from the previous versions, is uh, linear statics uh, for stress and displacement, um, modal um, analysis, which you've just seen, which gives you uh, your uh, resonant uh, frequencies and uh, associated mode shapes. Uh, also, uh, buckling analysis, which uses similar techniques to actually predict the uh, bu buckling shapes and the load factors associated with, with, with buckling failure. Uh, steady state thermal analysis, which we've seen, uh, and then coupled thermal structural analysis, whereby you can consider the effects of a temperature distribution on um, a thermal expansion structural type uh, problem. Um, and then you know, that's actually a, a pretty wide range of, of everyday analysis capability. Um, but there is this scalable uh, route into FEMAP so that models that have been set up and built in solid air simulation can be exported to FEMAP uh, without, you know, so you don't throw away the work that you've already done um, and you can uh, take take it to the next level if that's uh, if that's necessary or to, to another department within your organization. So, um, FEMAP then very briefly, we, we, we do have uh, another one of these um, demonstrations, presentations coming up uh, tomorrow on FEMAP. So we, we're not actually going to show you the software today, but if, if, if anyone's interested, um, there's, there's another event uh, which will give much greater insights into this product. But, uh, but just to summarize uh, a few key points, um, it is uh, associative with, with Solid Edge so that your, your CAD models um, can be fired into VMAP. Um, the analysis models can be set up, um, results obtained, and then changes in the Solid Edge um, native files will be picked up within the, uh, the VMAP model subsequently, and, um, and you can sort of make the necessary changes that, that adapt it to the to the change model which which may be uh, remeshing it may be um, moving the, the load application point to, to another to another feature if, if, you've, if you've gone and uh, erased a particular feature um, but but not only is this um, a, a solid edge type tool it's it's a it's a standalone tool uh, with a, a full range of um, CAD neutral import capability. In fact, it's a, it's a very good uh, data translator, and uh, I, I have heard of people that use it um, as, as, as a good value uh, CAD translator. Um, but given that uh, FEMA may not always be in control of the of the CAD data that's coming his way, the, uh, the this really extensive um, modeling tools which enable you to clean up the geometry or, or create geometry from scratch if necessary and certainly make changes to it with, within FEMAP. And there's a, a wider uh, range of, uh, of element types for uh, idealized types of structures so you can include mass elements uh, as well as to your, your, your shells and solids and uh, a sort of commensurate a range of um, mesh controls as well. Um, so, FEMA, when would that really be used in as an alternative to solid edge simulation? Um, I mean, a few re releases ago, there was quite a, a gulf in capability, but obviously, FEMA uh, solid edge simulation is, is catching up now in terms of its core capability. But one, one thing that uh, a tool like FEMA will always be good at is the ability to idealize complex assemblies um, when you might have a, a very complex fabricated structure that, that just there's the sheer mathematics of representing all, all those structures all the all the components with solid elements um, is, is beyond uh, the, the capability of most computers so being able to 
idealized complex structures and, and assemblies down into uh, beams and plates and uh, mass elements is, is really important if you're if you're designing ships, for instance, or, or other large structures. Uh, additionally, there's a, a broader range of, of analysis types, including uh, nonlinear material properties, nonlinear uh, deformations, uh, dynamic response such as uh, shock and vibration, where you're actually looking at exciting a structure with a with a shock pulse or with a um, vibration spectrum and, and looking at what the uh, how, how the structure responds to that in terms of the magnitude of its de deformations and stresses um, and there's obviously a high level of uh, thermal analysis capability as well with being able to do uh, time dependent thermal studies um, as well as access to a, a broader range of um, solvers such as the the, uh, the fluid flow solvers that, that are available. Um, and then finally, you know, having having set up perhaps a more complex model and solved it in a in a more uh, advanced way that the physics, uh, more advanced physics, there's a there's a broader, a better range of post processing capabilities for for really getting into interrogate the model. Um, and you know that's something that we can we can demonstrate a bit tomorrow for, for those who are interested um, and of course any questions uh, the follow on from this so in summary then um, simulation express uh, entry level system um, really quite limited in its capabilities to to uh, single parts and solid air simulation which we've really focused on today offers essential capability for everyday engineering analysis um, really does kind of tick uh, a great many boxes for, for lots of users and uh, it really by taking by putting analysis on the desktop of the designers it really uh, improves the ability of designers to understand their designs and, 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 and therefore produce better products and and although it, it has been really aimed stream, streamlined to be aimed at uh, everyday um, users ra rather than experienced analysts it, it is powerful enough and the underpinning technology the nx nastran solvers uh, are just the same as what you find in in femap so there's no reason why an experienced analyst couldn't use this tool to obtain uh, accurate results um, and then um, the upgrade path to FEMAP with NX Nastran, um, although it's targeted at uh, dedicated anal analysts, the, the tools have been, or the, the structure and layout of the program has, has really been uh, simplified over the last few releases to make it um, much more um, appropriate to be picked up and used by, by CAD engineers as well. So um, that's pretty much us. We've finished what we've we've set out to to show you this afternoon um, we hope there will be questions um, maybe that you you want to place right now which you can do so via the uh, the, the chat feature of webex or if you want to sort of pick up with us later uh, the best thing to do is to contact uh, to, to contact magenta your, your normal points of contact uh, and either try and speak to paul williamson who's looking after the uh, uh, fea campaigns at magenta or uh, he can put you in touch with myself or Darren.